Our guest today is writer, actress, performer, and author. Someone who has made appearances on PBS original work, starred in three soap operas, making a Broadway debut in 1968 in The Gingham Dog, and Butterflies Are Free. Second mother to most with 182 episodes of playing Caroline Ingalls' Ma on Little House on the Prairie. Stay tuned for Karen Grassley. Karen, thank you and welcome to our show. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. Now, yeah. I'd love to talk about your book. In 2021, Bright Lights and Prairie Dust, readers expect from the book? Well, they can expect my story. Not my story as TV actress uh, gossiping about what happened behind the scenes on Little House on the Prairie, and not a children's book. Uh, it's a grown-up book about the um, actual life of, of an actress, what it's really like, what it's like to audition, to train, to be rejected over and over to have a uh, thrilling breakthroughs as it was for me when I got the job on Little House and <clears throat> uh, also my own uh, personal struggles with uh, alcohol and depression. With this book, and I, I buy myself a copy, which I'm really happy I did, they're few and far between now at one was actually sold out. Well, yes. You know what happened? The, uh, we did not publish enough books. And so the book was sold out on the date it was published. So all the publicity, everyone was going to Amazon or their local bookstore, and there were no books. But within two weeks, there were books, and there still are plenty of books. And everybody should be able to find a book without any trouble. Now, when I was through your book and your website, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, we can actually send the book to you uh, to get it signed. But you also talk about this insert that is a little bit more economical. What's the insert? Yes. Is it, you know, age we can put in? Is it like a sticker? Yes, it's a little book plate that I will personalize to the person and sign. And then that can be set into the inside of the book to make it a personalized signed copy. Because the shipping... Not only is it slow, but it's also quite expensive, both coming and going. So I'm encouraging people not to send the book. I didn't think of that when um, I first said, go ahead and send it. Now, when we look at your book, there's words like depression, hysteria, there's mood swings, and they're throughout the book, even some touches on suicide. And you stated that as a young woman, you're out of touch with your own feelings. Can you elaborate on that? Why was that? I grew up in a house with an active alcoholic. Uh, my dad uh, suffered from alcoholism, such a dreadful disease. He was a wonderful, wonderful man, uh, smart and funny and devoted to his family. But he was an alcoholic. And that had effects on me as a child that then impacted my young adult life. And certainly my whole life, actually. Yeah. It, it's such a good thing was reading through it. And it really gave me a look at you, not the character, which was fabulous. And I really appreciate you writing the book and sharing it. Is there anything that is in this book that you have changed or add as you reflect back on it? Oh, you know, I worked so many years on this book that as far as I'm concerned, that is it. If I want to write something else, fine. But that is the whole enchilada right there. Now, Karen, on your website, I have a really neat section that I absolutely love. And it's called Story Time. Out of all of those children's books, it's your favorite. Oh, well, my very favorite is a very old book. It was called Stories That Never Grow Old. And it was a book my mother read to me. And it's full of stories that have uh, a good lesson in them for children, uh, but told in such a charming way. Such They're classic stories, things like um, the Bremen Town Musicians and the Ugly Duckling, you know, stories that 
we have all heard in different iterations. Um, and this was a beautifully illustrated book published back in the 30s or I don't know, maybe even as late as 1940 <clears throat> and given to me when I was a little girl. So I started out with that book thinking, oh, there are so many parents at home with these little kids and time to fill and teachers with time to fill online. And I could give them a 10 minute break by reading a story. And so that's what I did. And I, I would read one a week and then say a little something about what the story meant to me. And it was really a fun project. Are you still doing that? I mean, I'm on stage. No, I did about 40 of them, uh, which is a <clears throat> sizable amount. And uh, then, you know, life started to change. Kids started going back to school and so on. And then okay. I moved on to promoting the book. And is there any type of message that you can that you can give to the children? Everything that you're doing, out of all the books that you've read, the forty of them they've put out there, is there one book has a special message that speaks to you and that really needs to the to the younger generation? I can't think of which book, but to me, the lesson that I'm most engaged with right now is the lesson of the value of kindness. Life is so difficult right now for so many people. And there are so many scary things out there that the least we can do is just try to be kind to each other. You know, I think people are really having a hard time now. And it's understandable. You also had the opportunity to star in a heart more painful production of a movie called Not To Forget. What was it about this script that really drew you to the film? Well, my character was suffering from dementia, but she was one of those uh, dementia patients who was um, happy. She rarely was having those episodes of paranoia or <clears throat> bad hallucinations. And that was what happened to my mother was that she, in her very later years, um, suffered from dementia, and it grew worse over time. Uh, but she was somehow healthy within it, which was very unusual, you know? Um, what I mean is um, her attitude remained good most of the time. And my sister and brother-in-law had her living with them. And I said to my brother-in-law, you know, this is just, I can never thank you enough for doing this. And he said, oh, she's no trouble. She was some trouble before she came to her end. And um, um, my sister made a lot of sacrifices to take care of our mom. But um, it gave her a very safe space, you know. So we, I was, I was extremely lucky. So when we look at the character and how you yourself, my assumption is going to be that you drew on a lot of your own from the situation with your mother to kind of get you into that that mindset of that. That be fair? Yes, as you probably remember from my book, a lot of Carolyn is based on my mother. And the character in the movie, Not to Forget, is also based on my mother. And what I realize is that there are parts of my mother that are on stage here every night in this production of On Golden Pond. You know, her influence is just you. It's good to think about uh, the influence that mothers have. And so many times, I'm sure it, it seems so thankless, you know, just showing up and getting the meals on the table and sitting down with that math homework. But the impact is enormous on the character. My parents really taught me and my sister the values of honesty and hard work and being engaged. And it's invaluable. Now, when we look at the film of Not to Forget, there's actually this scene that I kind of fell in love with where you're, and you are playing piano 
are you actually playing? No. <laughs> I don't know how to play the piano. No. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's really neat because I was like, oh, wow, that's such a really neat hidden talent there. Uh, yeah, well, that's acting. <laughs> I, I'm wondering if you could share some light on your opinion. I, I mean, a lot of people, when they hear of dementia and Alzheimer's, they hear of a 36-hour day. Are you able to kind of comment yes. on what that really means? My sister told me when this happened to our mother to read that book. And it was invaluable to me, and I have recommended it to so many people. The 36-hour day really gives you very, very good advice on how to cope and how to be with the person and not be trying to get them to be in our world. It's just tremendous. There's another book that uh, came out just before we made the movie, I think it's called uh, Rethinking Dementia. Uh, it's by a, a doctor whose mother suffered from dementia. And <clears throat> it's a very important book because she's pointing out to us that while we're all talking about cures for Alzheimer's, more and more of our population is growing older and older. And the character in our play is having trouble remembering things. And everybody wants to help them get over that. But in fact, a huge portion of our population is going to be forgetting. And how are we going to cope with this health crisis? And, and what is our point of cure, cure, cure? Maybe curing isn't the thing. Maybe rethinking how we treat these patients and whether or not we think it's worthwhile to send them to the ER, which we had a very strong do not resuscitate for my mom, which is what she wanted. She said, do not hook me up to anything. Mm -hmm. And we were able to mm -hmm. find a wonderful hospice. And she was able to die very peacefully there. Karen, can you walk me through what kind of emotions get in our own head? And if there's anything specific that you do before and we're sending you out for this role, how do you prepare for that? <clears throat> well, I'm very, very well-trained actress. You know, I've had a lot of lessons. And so I focus very much on what does this character want? What is this character asking for? And that helps to bring me into the present. Um, but as you get more experience, um, your preparation changes. And for me now, um, what has been critical is my meditation practice because um, the nerves involved in many of the very uh, demanding uh, filming or rehearsal processes uh, oh, my nerves just get shattered. Uh, I just feel like, you know, I'm just wired. And so it's very important for me to keep up my meditation practice and remember to be here now. You know, um, that is really crucial. And of course, when we're on stage, what we want to be is we want to be alive with the audience. And that is being in the present. Same with the mm -hmm. film, you know. What the camera loves is true truth, vitality, you know, that's happening alive now. Yeah, it oh, sounds like we're talking about a lot of uh, grounding, clearing your mind, being in the character and being in the moment. It kind of leads me into a, a piece of the power of a positive mindset where, you know, right. you when you're meditating to ground yourself and be in the moment and be the character. And that's really neat. That helps a lot. Thank you. Cause I mean, some people go into those audition rooms and they're full of anxiety and they got the butterflies and choice do I make? And how do I ground myself to be the character as opposed to me? And I think uh, you, you kind of put the nail on the head there. Keep doing some training, make some really good choices, meditate and ground yourself before you go in. Yeah, you do your best to do that. You're still nervous as hell, you know, <laughs> but but you do you do the best you can. And then there's a a part of yourself that you need to trust that this 
part will find the choice, will find the character, that it will that it will work out. So when we talk about those nerves outside of meditating, they call you up and say, hey, we, we want you in this audition room. Do you still get those butterflies in the stomach? Do you still get the, you know, the cold hands and the sweats? Or is it kind of, no, let's do this. I'm going to knock it out of the park. I really couldn't say. I Honestly, I hardly ever go to auditions anymore. Uh, so I, I don't know. But when I still was going to auditions, particularly if it was something that I uh, had less experience with, like singing, then I would be very, very nervous. And practice, 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 practice. Um, but for a reading for a role, well, I kind of an I'm kind of an old hand now. You know, I mostly just have to go in there and do what I do. Do you ever get overwhelmed knowing that the characters that you've played over your career have had such a impact on people's lives? It was very touching to me when the book came out because that's when I found out the impact that Carolyn Ingalls has had on so many people. I really didn't get it before. I knew the show had this impact, but I did not understand how this character had imprinted on the hearts of so many people. And I keep getting this incredible love response, you know, from people because of what I was able to put into that character. It's so overwhelming and gratifying. I mean, it's just, it's been a gift to me, really. Well, I mean, you, you played the iconic character for 182 episodes. You've touched a lot of absolutely every. When we look back at your career and you've done, you started off in, in theater, some film and television. Do you find that there's a, a large difference or a big difference between the community of theater and the community of film and the community of television? Are these separate entities or are they more family oriented than the others? One more positive than the other, or they're just of all their own individual thing? Well, I don't think that it's not the, the medium that makes the difference. It's the people and their attitude toward being with each other that makes the difference. Um, although in film and television, frequently you don't have a rehearsal period where you get to know the people and build something together. Sometimes you just go in, you shoot for a day or a week, and boom, you're out. So that doesn't build a family, but you still have a emotional connection to the people that you've worked with if something special happened between you, um, and you just have to carry it inside. One last question for you today, Karen. What makes Karen grassy smile? Oh, almost everything. I smile uh, because the sun is out. I smile because I get to go to work. I smile because I hear my son's uh, voice on the telephone as I did last night. Um, I smile because I'm so lucky to be living this life I'm living. So full and interesting so many great people in it. Yeah, a lot of reasons to smile. I consider myself a very intelligent person, but at times I make mistakes. I sentence you to house arrest at your grandmother's residence. In the middle of nowhere? I hope that'll be enough to make a difference. Who are you? Jesus Christ. I'm your grandson, Chris. Oh. We have company. You're going to need to help me with the farm and your grandmother. Property runs on for hundreds of acres. This whole property belongs to Melody? Yep. You guys got to drive down here as soon as possible. It turns out my beloved grandma owns one of the largest corn farms in the entire South. Remind me again. Who are you? Look, she doesn't remember certain things, but she remembers about her family in the past. You see, Miss Melody is slowly disappearing. 
What do we think about God or what we're doing here? What, are you becoming religious? No, I just, I don't know, sometimes I think about our purpose. Miss Melody's disease is progressing, but at a much slower rate. We feel that the therapies that we're doing are really working. Is there a cure for Alzheimer's? No. But with science, each day counts. <laughs> the moments we share bring us close, give us meaning and purpose, make us happy and become memories. For most of us, unforgettable. You have to have faith that all this is worth it in order for that to happen. You have to have faith in yourself.